Boy, the diffuser works nice for this. I just got the light above us straight down with the diffuser on it. What a difference. So, tonight we're working on the uh, braces for these top plates we've been working on. A couple things you guys should know when you're picking out your braces. If you got a giant knot cluster or something like that in the middle of it or really anywhere on it, I've got a few knots here but they're not that big and there's not that many of them, don't use it for brace material. These braces are in compression. This is what's keeping your whole structure from racking. Remember, on a, on a timber frame building or something like that, you're not relying on sheathing and things like that to keep things from moving. You're relying on these braces. These are the heart of your frame as far as movement in the frame go. Also keep in mind that these braces are going to be in compression. You know, if they're working right, they're in compression. This is not a tension joint. There are braces that are designed for tension joints, but you wouldn't be having a 3-inch tenon on the end of that. These are meant to keep things from racking one way or the other. You always put braces in so they're opposing, so if you have one in one corner, you do one in the other corner opposite of it. Front to back, side to side. So I have a lot of braces in this barn. Um, shoot, everything's braced. So I braced the hell out of it, but it's a very windy area that I live in. If you guys can't tell through some of the older videos, we get a lot of wind here. This time of night it dies down, but come winter time, it comes off the end of Lake Ontario and we just get battered with it all winter long. So anyway, we've got this laid out. And remember what I told you guys before about the, uh, see if I can get that in the light for you. We see the numbers. Want to see the numbers. Okay. These top braces we're going a 30 inch by 30 inch layout. That means from point to point on this brace minus the tenon. We're not talking about the tenon. That's you, you put that on afterwards. But from point to point we want 42.43 inches. That works out to 42 and 6.88 inches or 6.88 sixteenths. So I'm going to round that up to 7 sixteenths. So from this point right here, and remember because we have a half inch housing, we measured up three eighths of an inch to account for that housing. Now if you measure across that 45 and you're on three eighths, that's going to be exactly a half inch from that point right there to the edge on that, on that 45 degree angle. So from that point there to that point there, it's going to be 42 and 7 sixteenths. And I'm going to double check myself, make sure uh, I did that right, because you know how it is when you're working uh, late after a long day. 42 and 7 sixteenths. Of course, that throws me off a little bit. I know it's there. Anyhow, and that's it. Now the other thing, because if you're using rough stock and things aren't playing down, so your thicknesses are varying, which mine do, you know, I'm not afraid to admit it but just makes you a little bit better at figuring your joints. I want this part right here. This is the part that's going to be flush with the outside of the building. I'm going to make that two inches because that is how that's the uh, that's my layout on this is a two by two layout. So this I want this side of it, the cheek of this tenon, I want this at two inches drop down. This is a little bit thicker than four inches. It's like a quarter inch over. Sometimes I'll just pull them off the sawmill without worrying about that. You know, if I'm close, I don't feel like making another cut, I'll just leave them the eighth or a quarter over. Not a big deal. But keep in mind, you have a two-inch mortise. It's going to be a two-inch tenon, which we're going to narrow it down a good sixteenth of an inch so it goes in there. Otherwise, it's not going to fit if they're exactly the same. But I only want that tenon two-inch. So whatever we do down on the other side where it's over, We've got to trim that off, and we also have to trim it back to account for the housing. So we're going to get cutting this. I've got eight of these to do for uh, for this side of top plates, and we're going to try to get them done tonight. Fortunately, these are very quick.
I'm going to give you guys an example of a piece that I can't use. It's kind of faded here, it's pretty weathered, but I got a big knot right there. I got another knot right there. I don't know if you could tell. We got some odd stuff with the grain there. I got that knot comes through there now. There's something that's kind of hard because this thing is faded. But I've got a lot of goofy grain right here. I can't use that for a brace. It's just it won't be strong enough. You see how that knot comes through and then we got a little cluster there. And you come down here and you got another big one that goes through here. You can't use that. So, And for those of you keeping track, that last brace took 23 minutes on the button. And that was with uh, screwing around making a shoulder on the other side. So they don't take too long once you do a few of them. Well, we got a couple of them done, guys. Um, I'm going to keep going tonight, but I'll cut the camera here because it's going to be uh, pretty much the same thing throughout. But um, So a few more braces to cut, and we'll be ready to put that those top plates on, and I'm looking forward to that because once I get those on, I can start on the queen posts and all that good stuff, purling plates, and all that stuff should go a lot faster. I've got to get back to the woods, haul logs home. Um, I haven't heard from that guy yet, see if he's... Pulled them out of the woods yet, but uh, I got to go after those so I can keep going. Um, I'm down to three logs left to mill here. One's good for a 10 by 10, the other one will be 8 by 8s. But uh, so anyway, a little more brace stuff. You know, they're shorter than uh, the other ones were, but the process is exactly the same. So hoping we've covered enough that you guys have figured it out all right what we're doing and how we're doing it and. I think a lot of things that were confusing a lot of the a lot of the viewers was that three eighths of an inch measurement off the edge there to get your half inch housing. But uh, I think we've uh, we've tried to clarify that pretty well in a couple of brace videos. So anyway, appreciate you guys watching and uh, welcome to all the new subscribers. It's good to have you. And uh, any questions or anything like that, feel free to ask. Remember. Uh, you can come here for some basic information on how to do this, but uh, remember there are a lot of other resources that are a lot more experienced than I am to teach you guys how to do this even better. So anyway, have a good evening. I will catch you the next time.